sudah press recording ya perfect a warm welcome to everyone that are able to join us at this quarter edition of going global series getting into global companies and international organizations certainly it's a timely session as we enter the beginning of the year of 2021 and many of our audience here may be graduating this summer or this year good afternoon if you're in europe good evening if you're in indonesia or elsewhere in asia and very good morning to those of you who are just starting your day in north america i'm stephen marcelino chairman of gipa and based in london for my day to day, I work at Accenture Strategy in the UK as client engagement lead, driving all of our financial services initiatives and projects for the UK and ASEAN region. Global Indonesia Professional Association and Short Kipa represent Indonesian professionals and executives working overseas across G20 and ASEAN in eight industry groups. We aim to promote business and investment links through highly talented Indonesian professionals and executives and to be a partner for Indonesia's human capital development and economic diplomacy. GIPA is certainly delighted to be able to host this event in collaboration with two of our strategic partners today, Coordinating Ministry for Human Development and Cultural Affairs, or in short, Kemenko PMK, also Indonesian Embassy in London, KBRI London. We are also supported by PP Dunia, Young Indonesia Professional Association in the UK, or YIPA UK, and IPA USA, Indonesia Professional Association in the US. Deputy Minister Prof. Agus Artono, Ambassador Dr. Desra Percaya, distinguished partners, colleagues, and delegates. Today, we are joined by almost 1,000 audience from this platform, Kemenko PMK's YouTube live channel and Giba's Facebook live channel. As per the RSVP information we received today, um, we um, are, these audience are from 35 plus countries, from San Francisco all the way to Melbourne. Um, across three regions and Americas, Europe, Middle East, and Indonesia, and the rest of Asia Pacific. And they are from 250 cities. In Indonesia alone, we have um, audience from the, very, uh, from the very west in Aceh and to the very east in Manokwari, apparently. So we are thankful that we have such a wide range of um, Indonesian students studying at top universities nationwide in Indonesia, as well as top universities overseas, as well as with young professionals as well. Uh, now, before we start, um, three, three points really. Please keep your mute, uh, mic muted throughout the session unless prompted otherwise. Um, our audience will have an opportunity to ask a live question. Please submit your questions through the Q&A box with your full name and location. Subject to time, the moderator will then will allow you access so that you can turn on your video and you can also ask questions live. Now on the running order, we'll hear a welcoming comments <clears throat> from a special guest at the Kaberi London, then a senior representative, deputy minister for education, quality improvement and religious moderation at Kemenko PMK that will deliver uh, well, uh, keynote remarks. Then our own head of professional development CEO will moderate and jointly facilitate the panel with three all female speakers from London, Washington DC, and San Francisco. After the panel, we will have a live Q&A and then we'll wrap up the session. How does that sound? Sounds good? On that note, I would like to invite His Excellency, Dr. Desra Prachaya, Indonesian ambassador to the UK, Ireland, and IMO to deliver a welcome remarks. Over to you, Pat Desra. Thank you very much, Mas Stephen, Prof. Agus Sartono. Deputy Coordinating Minister for Education Quality Improvement and Religious Moderation, friends from the Global Indonesian Professionals, GIPA, Indonesian professionals and students from across the globe, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon you. Good afternoon from London. Good evening, Jakarta and good day everyone. Thank you very much, Ma Stephen, for your kind introduction. It is indeed a pleasure for me to join you today and happy to note that everyone is in good health. I commend KIPA for organizing this very important webinar. The topic is indeed very interesting and pertinent to young Indonesian professionals and students of the 21st century. 
friends, colleagues, in a globalized, interconnected world we live today, many economic opportunities exist beyond state borders and beyond nationalities. At the same time, with COVID-19, not only we faced with unprecedented challenges, but also opportunities, including new sectors of employment, enabled by technological advances and digitalization. The world today is in dire need of a healthy, productive, and state-of-the-art machinery to accelerate global economic recovery, to recover better and stronger in a post-pandemic COVID world. Against this backdrop, I believe the momentum is high for Indonesia. Why? Indonesia is blessed with young, smart, creative, productive, and competitive human resources. They represent a lucrative demographic dividend. 70% of our current population, the backbone of the country's future, particularly in realizing Indonesia's vision 2045. A sovereign, advanced, fair, and prosperous Indonesia, a high-income country by 2045, the world's fourth largest by OECD's estimate, which will mark a great milestone 100 years since the founding of our nation. To this end, there are many reasons to be optimistic. The Indonesian government has committed a lot of resources for human resources development through digital technology, vocational education, and partnership with friendly countries. Human resources development is a key development pillar which will contribute to economic development, political stability, and quality of life. In this regard, one of the embassies main duty, Indonesian embassies in London, is to capitalize this potential fully and optimally through cooperation with our international partners, particularly in the UK and Ireland. Friends, having said that, this webinar is very useful for so many reasons. To learn from the experts and professional, to share experiences, to expand network, and for me personally, to stay productive amidst winter and lockdown in London. It also serves as an excellent platform to identify best practices in competing in the global talent pool, as well as to adjust ourselves to the new realities of a post-pandemic world. What I can share from my own experience is that Indonesians are still underrepresented at global fora, such as UN Secretariat and many UN specialized agencies. This has to change. And I am very keen to listen from our professionals with their vision is of a post-pandemic skill set. Beyond that, this is a very important, this is a clear testament of the traditional Indonesian spirit of Gotong Royong, collectiveness to achieve a common goal. Indeed, by helping each other to succeed, especially when we are abroad, we will become stronger as a country and nation. With that, I encourage you to stay till the end and make the most of this event. Be curious, ask questions, share your stories, success, and your success stories, and do not forget, let us do our best to be our to our beloved country and nation. Thank you very much.
Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Pak Desra, for a very warm uh, welcome remarks to everyone here. And again, thanks for support from the Indonesian Embassy in London and yourself, the Overseas Professional Hub in the UK, IPA UK, as well as at the global level here, IPA. Very much uh, deeply appreciated. Now, allow me to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Agus Sartono, MBA. He has been actively involved in shaping Indonesia's human capital development policy for the last 13 years. 11 of these 13 years, he spent as Deputy Minister under three different coordinating ministers at Kemenko PMK or Kemenko Kesra. During his post in Canberra 2007 as Education Attaché, he learned a lot how Australia's government attract young potential students by providing scholarship. Therefore, when he was promoted, to the Director of Planning and International Relations at Ministry of Education, he proposed to the minister the idea of such an endowment fund, leading to the establishment of education endowment funds that benefit many of Indonesians, many of you, many of us over the recent years. He was born in Purwarajo, Central Java, then he graduated with cum laude at UGM, pursued an MBA at North Carolina, USA, then a doctorate degree from the Department of Finance at the Innsbruck uh, University of Austria and Europe. Now, a lot of uh, story of his life story. After this event, we'll be sharing his book for your virtual uh, gifts for the ebook titled Jeja Sang Guru Memeluk Kisah Agus Sartono. But before that, um, why don't we hear directly from um, Deputy Minister for Education, Quality Improvement and Religious Moderation at Kemenko PMK, Prof. Agus Sartono. Over to you, Prof. Okay, uh, well, uh... Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Stephen Marcelino, for a very nice introduction. His Excellency, uh, <clears throat> Ambassador Dextra Pachaya, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, and uh, my colleagues, the other panels, uh, as Adri Arte uh, Meraksa, PhD, uh, and uh, Patria, Patricia Suyanto, and other global professional. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for the invitations to address Indonesian professional working across uh, G20s and ASEAN, as well as Indonesian students studying abroad and at home in Indonesia. I am honored to represent the Coordinating Minister of Human uh, Development and Culture Affairs, Her Excellency Professor Muhajir Effendi. Unfortunately, Due to a very tight schedule, he's unable to join us uh, and he just visited uh, another areas which is affected by the disaster recently. He convey his like appreciation uh, to GIPA for its uh, efforts in convening uh, great speakers in today's going global series, going into global companies and international organizations. In my role as a deputy at the Kemenko PMK, especially for the last 11 years. I look after a number of priorities which revolve around designing the human capital development policies. The portfolio is to oversee the Minister of Culture and Education, the Minister of Religions, and the Minister of Higher Education and Research, especially the Minister of Higher Education and Research for the last five years. And uh, my final thesis when I joined the Indonesian Resilient Institute was I wrote the importance to have the Ministry of Higher Education Research in 2013. And thanks in 2014, the President Jokowi just established the Minister of Higher Education Research. But unfortunately, uh, in the second term, the higher education is back uh, combined with the Minister of National Education. But uh, I'm still happy because uh, the emerge of the new director general in the Ministry of National Education, which is the director general of uh, vocational, in which I, I continuously support since 2015, especially when we are talking about the uh, human development. Uh, His Excellency Ambassador and uh, all the participants, let me share that uh, back in September 27, when I was educa as an education attaché in Canberra, I organized the International Student Conference, which were attended by more than 200 participants at the time was. Uh, 
the same event as APEC uh, in Sydney and also attended by nine ministers. And uh, thanks their time, all the participants uh, were welcomed by the President uh, Yudoyono. And one of the recommendations is that we propose to the ministers, this is very uh, urgently needed. Indonesia has a kind of education endowment funds. And uh, six months later, when I was promoted as the Director of Planning and International Cooperations within the Ministry of National Education, uh, especially in an, exactly in uh, February 2008, then I proposed to the ministers uh, how important it is to have such endowment funds. And thanks in 2009, 2010, then the endowment fund was established until now was managed by the LPTP. Uh, I'm actively involved in designing human capital development policies. And as uh, uh, the Marcelino mentioned, I uh, serving the three consecutive uh, Menko from Bagung Laksono and then Bupuan Maharani and now the Muajir Effendi. So <clears throat> similar to some of you, all the participants, I spent a number of years abroad for my MBA in the US and my doctorate degree in Austria. That is where I found uh, the utmost importance of developing global experience overseas. One of the example is the, the sector of logistic. At the time was when I'm studying in US, I observed the UBS and HEP and uh, FedEx and other logistic companies uh, become one of the, uh, the cases were discussed uh, in, uh, during the courses. And similarly, the mobile banking has already been highly developed in Austria in early 2000s. And from these observations and drawn into the current time frame, uh, I realized that Indonesia is somewhat uh, 30 years lag behind the other uh, countries. So <clears throat> when we are talking about human uh, capital development, uh, let me share some uh, slide. Uh, Marcelo, you may help me to or the operators over there to share the slides, please. Uh, let me a little bit divert uh, <clears throat> talking about the, the developing Indonesian human capitals. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. His Excellency and our participants, uh, <clears throat> as we all know that we are having the, uh, this too fast, I think. Please, the first slide, please. As I know that uh, now we, we have the, the demographic uh, bonus, uh, but <clears throat> we are also facing uh, the, now the, the, the first slide, I guess. Uh, yeah, Amazing. yeah, here we go. Okay. As the ambassador mentioned that uh, we are having the uh, demographic incentive at the time. And as I discussed earlier with the, the chairman, that uh, for the next 20, 30 years, Indonesia hopefully uh, will harvest this uh, demographic incentive in which 70% of the populations are the productive age. But uh, those incentive also uh, bring all the challenges in the, in the life corners. At least you, you could recognize that uh, by 2045, the number of population will increase at least to become uh, around 3,060 millions with the fertility rates uh, down to 1.9. At the same time, uh, having a good health facilities and uh, education improvement qualities, the life expectancy getting longer and longer. Of course, uh, those uh, longer life expectancy also bring another challenges, meaning that those 70% of populations might become the, the elder people. So this is also uh, uh, put the nation uh, on, on, a, on a big uh, challenge as well. And also the number of uh, elderlies is estimated to become uh, 42.8 million uh, by 2045. And the dependency ratio uh, will uh, decrease a little bit to 40.2%. And the toughest challenge uh, by 2045 is that the resident live in urban areas 
will increase significantly to around 65, 69%. Those are the challenges that we, are, we have to, to tackle since now. And we are talking about the uh, <clears throat> demographic incentive. Uh, in reality, we are uh, having uh, not as good as what we expected. Because in terms of labor force, 65% uh, of the labor force only earn uh, the junior high school uh, degrees or just finished at the junior high school. And another 23% uh, just graduate from senior high school, meaning that um, around 89, 90% uh, uh, workforce uh, just earn a senior high school and less than 13% uh, graduate from uh, university. From this uh, single graph alone, we can draw that uh, when we are talking about the human capital development, at least need more than 20 years to save things from low educated labor force to high educated labor force. So at least need 20 years. And the, the, the black bar on this graph uh, indicate that the, the number of uh, labor force who graduate from elementary schools uh, declining uh, for the next 20 years. This also sent a message that the government of Indonesia have to prepare the transformation for agriculture sectors. Because otherwise, uh, for the next 20 years, there are no, uh, not enough resources to work in agriculture. And uh, it will make the uh, dependency to the import uh, good uh, become bigger and bigger. This is uh, the message from uh, this uh, single uh, picture. So again, when we talk about the human capital development, we have to, uh, to be consistent and it took at least 20 years. Meanwhile, the challenge, uh, let, uh, please do, let me please do, to move on to the next uh, pages. Here is the challenge. You may all aware, so you, I do believe the, you already <coughs> noticed the uh, slide. This is the future of education uh, adapted from, from uh, the World Economic Forums. Yeah? The, the challenge of human resource development that uh, at least there are 85 million job, uh, will, uh, <coughs> uh, job loss in the next uh, five years. But it doesn't mean that uh, there is those 85 job uh, loss will not be replaced by another ones. 85% uh, job position over the world will be replaced by sophisticated machines. And 50% uh, job title over the world uh, will use automatization. Uh, this is why, as I uh, discussed earlier, that the challenge of the government is uh, tougher and tougher because at least we have to uh, provide at least uh, 11 uh, million uh, job opportunity for the new job seekers as well as uh, the uh, unemployment. Uh, let me jump to the, the, the last uh, human capital development cycles. Uh, Marcelino, please. Uh, yeah. Here, the His Excellency and all the participants. Here's the, the slide, uh, the, the concept in which I try to develop uh, for the last four, four or five years. When we are talking about human capital developments, uh, is a, please keep in mind that the human capital development is a never ending process. So when we are talking uh, to develop the human capital is a never ending process because the generations come and go, uh, every day you born, uh, new baby born and every day uh, some uh, people just uh, pass away. So what the government uh, did uh, to handle the human capital? The, when we are talking about human capital, we have to focus uh, on an early state, what we call it so when, when the, and, and the prenatal uh, state, meaning that the new couple, uh, before they get married, they have to know what are the responsibility of becoming the parents? And they have to know the importance of uh, 1,000, the first 1,000 days uh, 
of the the uh, the life, the new life. Meaning, since uh, uh, this wife pregnant, get a pregnant until the baby born for the two years old, they have uh, to know uh, and they have to take care uh, with the sufficient. Uh, uh, with the Sufian uh, foods, uh, otherwise uh, they will uh, have uh, the stunting babies. Uh, this is not a good for, for the nation because the social cost of the stunting babies is, is, is uh, quite uh, unaffordable. And you may know that the 30% of the new baby born is uh, stunting. And uh, those uh, state then continues under early child care education and when we are able to manage those the first two states, then of course we are expecting to have a good uh, student later on on the primary uh, school as well as junior and senior high school. Some of the uh, student graduate from senior high school, then uh, as I mentioned in the in in beginning, 1.8 people have to go to the labor market simply because. Uh, some of them may not have the uh, economic uh, capacity or some of them uh, simply because uh, the uh, not able to go to the university because of the, the capacity of university as itself. Yes, at the moment, the government tried to encourage the university to enlarge the, the capacity, the enrollment rate uh, by 10 to 20%. But uh, we also realize that it's not good uh, because uh, we have to think also about the, the quality. Okay, then uh, some graduate from university combined with this graduate from uh, senior high school then go to the labor markets as uh, categorized as the, the productive age and uh, some of them become the, the elderly people. We do hope that we are able to, to save things uh, this populations uh, uh, and to increase the productivity uh, by increasing the education quality because we do believe that uh, if the education level increases the national produ uh, productivity will increase as well and uh, the next uh, consequences uh, we do hope that uh, those people are able to generate the incomes okay. more than enough uh, to support their uh, life and later on, they are able to make saving. And uh, nationally, then uh, Indonesia will have the, uh, a bigger national saving because it's also important uh, to support the other people later on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, come and call PMK as I uh, mentioned to you, uh, also have the main responsibility to continuously support this, uh, all the agenda, uh, supporting from the early child until the, uh, the elderly people. In Indonesia, uh, <clears throat> as we know uh, that uh, at a time also underrepresented in many global companies and international organization with global outreach and impact. To face this issue, the government is developing at the moment in the uh, talent management program. Yeah. I also involved in the talent management program. The government hope uh, that this talent management, as uh, I do believe that uh, most of the participants in this uh, conference are uh, categorized as uh, the talented people, yeah. are able to uh, <clears throat> make it in Asia to perform leapfrogging and advancement in uh, various sectors. Also, uh, the, the most uh, risk that we want to avoid is uh, the middle income trap. Because we do believe having the critical mass of the talent people, we are able to uh, avoid those uh, trap. Therefore, we need to double or even triple Indonesian talent with the global experience to unlock the nation's global competitiveness. And this is the key priority for Indonesian human capital development. So uh, yes, uh, we will continuously improve the quality of education in Indonesia. And at the same time, we also send the young bright students abroad, uh, hopefully 
uh, the next 10, 15 years will harvest uh, from this Thailand student. Kemenko PMK, and I would like to commence the GIPA as, the, as, the, as a key global secretariat who has worked very closely with more than 15 overseas professional hub across America regions, uh, and then uh, regions and APEC regions. And GIPA has uh, championed and provided a practical uh, strategies. On uh, especially the first one, how Indonesian students abroad can transition into professional organizations. And, this, and the second, how professional can transition into executive future businesses leaders that will have big corporations around the world. Keep on, keep up your great work in championing human capital development. MNCO PMK will be very pleased to continue in supporting and collaborating with you in 2021 and beyond to enhance Indonesian human capital development. I want to close this keynote uh, remark with some call to act for two group of people. For those who are abroad, after graduating from your studies, consider working abroad before going back to Indonesia. Today, learn from professional success stories and implement the strategies in breaking into this reputable institution. Gain this global experience while you can implement all the skill. And when you're ready, just come back. The door is always open. No matter where you live or walk, you can always contribute for Indonesia. Nationalism is not a measure by where, where you work, but nationalism is measured by your heart attached to Indonesia. Again, no matter where you are, I do hope your heart and your passion is still with Indonesia. For those of you in Indonesia, you can play your next move today and how you can study abroad with the help of scholarship or following many others who are able to study of great, at great universities abroad. Studying at university will open up your mind, your views and your thoughts. Then I think about what sort of careers you'd like to do after completing your higher education. So you can start building up the relevant scale from today. Learn from your professional on what must be done. Prepare your path in going global. Shoot for the moon and let's see where you, where you get to. Imagine you can be like many professional members working abroad in one or two or three years time from now. No time to waste, right? I do hope uh, my message is loud and clear. Thank you. And I do believe all the participants, you're part of the most talented people of Indonesia and be, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you'll be part of the talent people, talent, Indonesian talent people. And uh, I do believe uh, you'll be enjoy your time. And I expecting the next 20 years, you'll be sitting on the driver's seats. Uh, no matter who you are, you may become uh, the uh, parliament members, minister, uh, or even president or CEO of reputable companies. Hope everyone stay well and safe. And congratulations to all of you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Minister, uh, Professor Agus Sartono. It's amazing to hear your perspectives on human capital development and how we all can play a part. Kipa certainly will be delighted to be able to continue supporting your efforts, Kamenko PMK support uh, from all of the 15 plus overseas professional hubs uh, across the three regions uh, where Kipa operates. 
Um, on that note, uh, if many of you interested in supporting GIPA and getting to know more would like to get involved with the GIPA's Global Secretariat, uh, it's quite timely because after this event, we'll officially launch our open recruitment push where uh, we're experiencing a huge amount of growth in recent years. And then you can be part of us, especially those student leaders with strong track record in organizational experience. Details around the open recruitment for GIPA will be sent out after the event, along with the uh, virtual ebook gift that um, Deputy Minister Prof. Agus has kindly shared to all of the attendees. So stay tuned on GIPA social media channels, GIPA underscore ID for more. Now, um, we are uh, after hearing welcoming remarks and keynote remarks, um, I would like to introduce our moderator as we move on to the panel session, uh, Teuku Arki Maraksa, PhD. He is head of America's region and head of professional development, COE, at GIPA. Arki is responsible for covering GIPA's outreach in the America's region and spearheading a center of excellence on professional development. Within his capacity at, CA, uh, at this COE, Arki develops programs targeted for Indonesian students and professionals to enhance their career trajectory. These programs are rolled out um, at a number of overseas professional hubs across the globe with some best practices shared across the network. Arke also co-founded and leads the Indonesian Professional Association IPA in New York since 2017. Currently, Arke works at the Director of Strategic Initiatives and Model Governance within the risk function of American Express New York. Arke has a doctorate degree in economic geography and international business, and he previously taught at the State of the University of New York, US, and Singapore campus for business and international trade programs. Today, he will also be facilitator to guide the panelists, not just a moderator, but guide the panelists and audience in today's interactive discussion on career prep and ultimately getting into global companies and international organization overseas because he has spent three years teaching at State University of New York, where he also performed successful career coaching to hundreds of students. And through his capacity at IPA New York, he and his team host an annual career coaching series to ensure that students can get the best insights for job hunting, job search in the US and overseas. Now, over to you, Arki. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, and I hope everybody can hear me loud and clear. So I think we're going to go to the main event uh, where a lot of us, including the panelists and speakers, will share their experience directly to you. Before that, I do have a quick note that I want to share to why this program is important, to why the Going Global Series is something that we want to continue and uh, create an impact to, to many of us, including your audiences. So first things first. We are expecting Indonesia to be the top five economy by 2050. This is this is this is uh, based on report that's provided by Goldman Sachs and uh, Price uh, Price Warehouse Coopers PwC. But the main issue is that there is an underdeveloped workforce talent pipeline that exists right now, and potentially this can impact Indonesia's future. Uh, the talent gap is widening by 2030. Indonesia. Yeah, is, is projected to have a shortage of 3.8 million skilled talents with good education and most importantly, global exposure. And if that happens, we are likely to lose $480 billion in economic uh, costs. And this is something that we want to push uh, in, in, towards our future in terms of trajectory. And as uh, Desa mentioned as well, we have vision 2045, and we have to make sure that we have the, all the support from Indonesians, uh, human capital uh, aspect and, and talent and professional to make sure that we become one of the top economy in the world. So from our position at GIPA, uh, especially in, in, in my role as the professional development uh, COE lead, we want to help students uh, to consider their careers uh, in a global trajectory. So we have a section that we want to push students to professionals. And then we have a section that we want to support professionals into becoming global executives around the world. And how do we actually do that? How can we do it? What's interesting is that GIPA, we have relationship and partnerships with various professional hubs, as Stephen Marcelino mentioned, uh, around the world. And Within these hubs, there are hundreds and thousands of Indonesian professionals working in top companies and international organizations who are truly willing to share their experience and provide insights to how can you reach a goal or a position such as themselves. And what we have here is that we have amazing speakers that we have today, and they'll be sharing directly to you what are the tips, tricks, secrets into becoming successful in the global stage. So uh, our focus uh, particularly is to ensure that uh, we to, especially today, what we want to spend time on is that 
uh, we want to share with you what is needed if you want to access top companies, such as Fortune 500 companies or uh, global companies that are renowned around the world. And how do you prepare yourself when it comes to joining international organizations such as the United Nations or uh, World Bank, IMF, and so on. Um, I think uh, as, an, as an addition, uh, what we're going to do today is actually we're going to drill, uh, we're going to have an interactive discussion with a couple of drills on what is the most important preparation. This is in the context of resume, cover letter, what is the interview process, and what is the execution process. Uh, to that end, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, so we have three. I'll begin with the first one, Patricia. So Patricia is currently a senior consultant at Deloitte San Francisco. And in her line of work, she focuses on uh, information governance and e-discovery. And uh, as a consultant, she helps multinational clients solve their big problems, such as profitability and, uh, and, and any other areas where they need improvements. Patricia has a uh, Bachelor's of Administration degree in financial, uh, Finance and Information Management from uh, Boston University. And currently, she's also part of the Indonesian Professional Association San Francisco board member. And then second, uh, we have Alda Ardelia, who is a venture capital associate at International Finance Corporation, which is part of the World Bank Group. Uh, Alda focuses on disruptive technologies, accelerator, VC, and growth equity investment across Central, Eastern Europe, South Asia, Middle East, and North Africa. Prior to IFC, Alda has participated in various financial institutions. She also has an MBA from Rotman University of Toronto. And lastly, on our speakers list, we have Nancy Amelia, uh, Assistant Vice President in Bank of America, London. She is actually while working in a bank, she's actually a software engineer. So she works a lot in the, in the, in the capabilities aspect of the, of the bank. Uh, so she revolves building trading applications for Credit Desk and specializes in derivatives product. Uh, on top of that, Nancy is also part of the YIPA, Young Indonesian Professionals Association UK's operations director. And I think to that end, I'd like to probably have the speakers to also say hi. Uh, maybe I'll begin with Patricia. Patricia, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, I can. Sounds good. So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so everybody can focus. So Patricia, I think I think before we jump in into this, we, we would like to get to know a little bit more about you. Like maybe maybe in a minute or two, can you tell us what do you exactly do at work and and maybe tell us about your hobby too. Yeah, of course. I mean, hi, everyone. I hope you're all staying safe and doing well. As Arky mentioned, I am a consultant at one of the big four accounting firms, and our clients are all part of the Fortune 500 list. In terms of my day-to-day, -day, I am part of the project management team, and as a project manager, we plan, initiate, execute, and also deliver results. Uh, I also work within the broad forensic services umbrella, specifically within electronic discovery to help our clients go through legal proceedings such as litigation or government investigations. I handle all stages throughout a project's life cycle and communicate with both internal teams and also the client to help them with their needs. In terms of what I do for fun, I love to cook and I've tried to make homemade versions of my favorite restaurants here in quarantine. I've also enjoyed going on small hikes to explore the views of California. Sounds good, Patricia. I think, I think it'll be interesting. Maybe one day we can try out your cooking or maybe you do a session on cooking, but let's move on to our next uh, speaker, Alda. Alda, you there? Yes. Thank What's you, up? Arky. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me and hope all it says stay safe. Uh, so in terms of what I do day to day, it's like, you know, venture capital stuff. Uh, so I start with like deal sourcing and then do the due diligence, try to select like the best investment opportunities in terms of the startups or venture capital funds. We also invest in the accelerator, incubator. So we kind of like have a lot of asset class, but still in the disruptive technology space. And then also managing system portfolio across you know, global in the US, in uh, Southeast Asia, in MENA, and also in uh, Central Eastern Europe. So that's basically like the range of our investment are in place. And uh, I like to, you know, like do Zumba traveling for fun, uh, also exploring a like, new coffee place and new restaurant. Uh, but currently I'm focusing on getting my Zumba instructor license. So later I can hopefully teach Zumba. 
Sounds good, Alda. It seems like you're going to change the world one movement at a time. <laughs> and with yeah, moves. with the Zumba move, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so let's uh, let's have let's invite Nancy now. So, Nancy, if you can tell us a little bit about what you do at Bank of America. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm actually a software engineer. So, on a day-to-day -day basis, I mostly write code um, and also serve the desk. Basically, if they have any issues with uh, any Our engineers, we mostly write code like us our day to day. We do manage like uh, projects. Um, I think when you are higher up the level, but yeah. Um, apart from that, what I do for fun, I like to try like a lot of new things, like like new random things from like um, um, like practicing yoga, which I started during this lockdown, and. So things like I think playing the piano. So yeah, that's what I kind of do for fun. Sounds good, Nancy. So bersatu. Uh, di, di saat kita sedang fokus terhadap topik tersebut, uh, cuman ya mungkin uh, again for the speakers kita ini this is a casual discussion kita ngobrol-ngobrol, but I think that's for you to share what is yang penting banget yang kadang-kadang misalnya -kadang, dari uh, Indonesian student, Indonesian professional to make maybe mistakes or things that they need to improve. That's what we want to do. This is what we want to do. Tips and tricks yang Gak ada yang dibahas, dibahas di kelas. And you see when okay. and if you can see it loud and if you can see it clearly over there, jadi kita bakal bahas resume and cover letter. Uh, kita akan bahas interviewing. Uh, kita akan bahas execution. And ultimately at the end, uh, we have we will have some live Q&A as well. Tapi kalau ada pertanyaan, go ahead, bisa langsung ditanya sekarang. Nanti kita akan coba jawab uh, satu persatu at the same time. Jadi, uh, tapi sebelum kita masuk ke, ke topik resume, interview, and cover letter, ada beberapa hal yang kita ingin share juga, karena ini penting. So, the slide here, it will say important things to consider. Dan dalam important things to consider, there are three elements. Pertama itu hiring cycle. Uh, this is something very, very important. Karena most global companies, international corporations, dan juga international organization, UN and World Bank, mereka itu ada timeline. Mereka itu ada waktu di mana uh, ada job opening. Dan aplikasinya mesti disubmit sebelum uh, sebelum waktu itu habis. So very very important, something yang mesti dipikirin. I would recommend uh, if you're very very interested juga you can I would I would say take notes, uh, bikin catatan untuk from this acara. We will reveal a lot of very very interesting things. That's that's going to be very very helpful. Number two, very very important is also to build your experience and leadership activity. Ini kenapa penting? Karena nanti waktu kita membuat resume, waktu sedang interview. Kalian or everybody will want to make sure that informasi yang ada itu sesuai dengan job description -nya. Dan yang terakhir itu crafting relevant skill. Nah ini ini uh, lumayan penting juga dan malah mungkin paling penting karena contohnya misalnya mau daftar kerja sebagai software engineer di perusahaan teknologi kayak Facebook atau Google dan lain-lain. Uh, of course you need to know how to code, you need to know how to write your code, etc. It's it's not like you're going to magically get the job just by doing the interview and doing the a good resume. So there will be some testing that is done. Jadi ini sebelum 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 we start, uh, I want to emphasize these important three things. And nanti kita juga bakal deep dive uh, untuk segmen-segmen ini. Now, let's go to the next segment or the first one. And and before that, uh, ini adalah sebuah konsep yang I would like for all the uh, participants to also understand. Uh, ini ini bakal dibahas nih. Ini ini topic the topic of the day will cover a lot on star. Situation, task, action and result. 
uh, this is a framework untuk membangun uh, resume. This is a framework untuk interviewing dan kemungkinan besar ini adalah ekspektasi dari semua uh, company, semua international organization dalam segi menjawab interview, dalam segi menulis. Ini adalah sebuah elemen yang sangat dibutuhkan. Nanti kita bakal deep dive lebih dalam lagi. Apa maksudnya? So, let's go to the first topic. Focusing on resume. So, apa sih resume? So, resume actually it, it showcases your understanding uh, of what the employer is looking from you and whether you have the relevant skills and experience needed to succeed in the position. Kalau di Indonesia itu biasanya dibilangnya CV. Uh, nah, perbedaannya ada ada sedikit perbedaan antara di Indonesia dan di luar negeri. Cuman uh, dari segi uh, kami hari ini yang mau kita sharing lebih dalam itu adalah uh, empat hal penting. Pertama adalah structure. Kedua itu adalah on quantification. Uh, quantification nanti saya, nanti akan dijelasin lebih dalam lagi. Ketiga itu adalah on leadership and accomplishment dan terakhir itu grammar. So to that end, I would like to start engaging with the with the speakers here. Uh, let me unshare my screen quickly. So first things first, uh, maybe I'll, I'll I'll ask Alda. Uh, Alda, you've worked both in Indonesia and overseas, right? What do you see in terms of major difference antara CV sama resume? Ekspektasinya di Indonesia dan luar negeri? Uh, one thing that I kind of like notice is uh, how long is the CV? Kayak kalau di Indo itu kayak two page kayak nggak apa-apa kan? Tapi kalau misalnya di specifically di US ya atau di Canada, uh, biasa kita cuma pengen liatnya kayak one page resume. So it's like uh, short and sweet. Jadi kayak langsung hit what's the most important karena kayak HR-nya uh, if I talk to HR they kind of like they cannot really see the you know all, all things in the resume they just like hit the key points if you cannot really grasp the attention of the HR like at your first page you are like done because they sort out kayak thousand of the resume right uh, so yeah kayak, kayak two pages like kind of too much for uh, US and Canada job application, I think. And, uh, and I think ini juga uh, uh, the same thing di, di other European countries ya. Usually mereka maunya satu halaman aja, nggak terlalu banyak dan bisa dikompres. Uh, and, and what's interesting is that mungkin ada dua perbedaan lagi. Uh, kalau profesional biasa satu, profesional industri satu halaman. Tapi kalau akademia, uh, kalau emang mau jadi profesor atau, atau pengajar gitu, emang itu biasanya emang banyak halamannya. Karena mesti dilis kan semua publikasi-publikasi dan tulisannya. Nah, I think uh, pertanyaan berikutnya yang I think perlu pengen di share itu kayak uh, sebenarnya dalam CV itu uh, dalam strukturnya uh, dalam uh, poin pertama yang tadi di share itu struktur kayak apa sih yang perlu ditulis dalam dalam CV dalam resume supaya benar-benar top notch ini so, buat gua lagi <laughs> boleh Alda or or Patricia oh. or Nancy kalau mau jawab oke okay, probably I can start uh, situation jadi kan uh, tadi udah sempat yeah. disebutin star ya situation hmm. task action result Menurut gue yang paling penting di resume or CV itu how you quantify your result uh, with the glimpse or your actually what what actions you actually take. Jadi kayak hmm. itu uh, kan karena CV itu one page, it's a very scarce resource. Kayak uh, achievement kalian pasti kan banyak banget kan yang mau ditampilin. Jadi kita harus kayak pilih mana yang actionable items yang benar-benar mau di highlight and then how you quantify the result. For example like revenue growth by 50%. I think that kind of the most items that usually missing in the like Indonesian resume. I I, I totally agree with that and uh, my friends and I yang uh, kita semua kayak hiring leader or pernah interview orang di, di, di for major global companies biasanya uh, emang kan kita biasanya suka refer uh, teman-teman Indonesia buat masuk gitu atau atau sharing-sharing lah ada job opening uh, misalnya di di kota kota US atau uh, Eropa. Terus biasanya first round tuh uh, ini ini buat uh, for the audience juga gitu. Uh, very very important uh, kalau bisa taruh angka uh, angkanya yang seperti Alda bilang revenue growth atau angka impact kerjaan kalian uh, dan dan juga kayak uh, uh, any number yang bisa di sambungan terhadap uh, achievement it's very very important and and i think uh, to that end uh, what what i like to what i like to invite uh, patricia i think patricia you're in consulting right 
Jadi I think uh, quantification is very very important. Like can you can you share a little bit on that? Yeah, I think you know in terms of the general resume that you're going to have, it's very important to have the right structure, it's important to have the right grammar and I think all of that just is just a standard. That's how you're going to have somebody read your resume. But on top of having the right structure and having the right grammar and making sure you proofread everything, I think what sets you apart is to make sure you quantify because there's a lot of times where you know you would be doing the exact same thing as somebody else. So how how are you going to set yourself apart? So let's for example for quantification, you know, I can say that I've developed this quality control method that reduced the error rate by 2%. Something like that is quantifiable and when someone says, you know, I did a lot of x, you know, what a lot means to me is very different to what a lot means to you. So if you can quantify it using numbers and you've kind of let them know that you know this is what i mean by a lot yeah thanks thanks patricia that's that's very very uh, insightful and uh, maybe like another thing yang tadi ditulis juga itu adalah gimana sih caranya kita bisa craft leadership and accomplishment uh, gimana caranya kita bisa make sure uh, di resume itu waktu kita job application itu kayak udah udah tertulis semuanya uh, atau 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 solid gitu maybe to this one i'll invite nancy uh, nancy what's what's your take on 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 leadership and accomplishment supaya benar-benar bagus banget resume dan langsung dapat interview. I think kalau personally leadership and accomplishment itu when you are especially if you're students when you're in when you're doing your degree degree try to do like a lot of like other extracurricular activities kayak misalnya join part of the student council atau join part of organizations because I feel like um you, that your experiences uh, the like kayak your leadership experiences your Um, outside of like your class is what can help you not only with your CV but also with your interviews because when they start asking questions itu nanti that's where you will get your answers and um, I think apa ya jadi be aware of all the opportunities available pertama-pertama ya jadi misalnya if if you're currently a student cari tahu what are the opportunities are there available for you out there jadi When you know this, then you can start like sort of like narrowing, um, narrowing your focus on, oh, these are relevant to what I want to be, and these are not relevant to what I want to be. But first, you need to be aware. So like things like internship opportunities, spring insights, uh, uh, apalagi ya, kayak misalnya company events, event, like I think those are very important for you. Thanks, thanks Nancy. I think that's very, very important. And uh, I think pesan uh, untuk teman-teman, uh, terutama student gitu, kalau masih kuliah, make sure you participate in organizations. Kalau luar negeri ada PPI, uh, di Indonesia ada BEM, uh, di US ada ada Permias, or bisa juga masuk ke organisasi-organisasi lokal lainnya. Ini ini sangat penting karena mereka pengen lihat gimana student itu uh, nilainya bisa bagus atau belajar yang sesuai dengan uh, target pekerjaannya, tapi di luar itu mereka adalah orang-orang yang comfortable atau nyaman untuk menjadi pemimpin. Karena biasanya kalau kita kerja ini, uh, I think Patricia, Alda, Nancy, We have to work together, right? Like, uh, like in in the big team, biasanya. Dan dan in the in those team tuh kayak mesti bisa ngelit dan dan very very critical sebagai orang. It, it doesn't matter gitu. Kayak you're Indonesian or or not, but you will be leading a team and most likely timnya juga orang-orang internasional lain. It's it's going to be a global team that you be leading. Nah ini uh, mungkin sebelum saya lanjut ke slide berikutnya atau topik berikutnya, ini ini ada beberapa pertanyaan nih ya. Jadi uh, akan kita coba jawab juga uh, at the same time. Mungkin yang 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 pertama ini uh, yang pertanyaan yang muncul itu ada dari uh, Iqbal Akbar. So pertanyaannya sometimes numbers are confidential. We should not disclose that in the CV or interview. So is there any way out uh, on on providing this? Um, I think probably uh, I, I have my answer, but I would like to first invite the speaker dulu gitu. Yang anybody want to take on this? Kalau misalnya angkanya confidential nih. Tapi gimana caranya bisa dimasukin ke CV kalau misalnya mau apply pekerjaan lain? I think in my experience kalau misalnya kita mau quantification itu nomornya nggak usah yang confidential misalnya kalau misalnya kita bilang oh you know I worked with a company that gen- and that project generates a revenue of 15 million dollars. 
we can just say that $50 million, but we don't have to say the name of the company. So that's how you make that specific company confidential. And you're not going to let anybody know who your client is, because at most times we don't want to tell people um, who our client is. So we can also use do it that way. And in another way, quantification doesn't necessarily mean an external number. It could also be an internal number. Let's say, you know, I worked and train five people on a monthly basis. That's those numbers are not necessarily confidential. So you can kind of go around it that way by using internal numbers versus external numbers. Yeah, probably just to add also uh, like you also can kind of like a personal achievement personal a KPI like lab three people in the team uh, to achieve certain KPI by improving like efficiency by 200%. Like that's kind of a, a growth rate that probably it's not really confidential because that's your own personal achievement, like own personal KPI. Are we losing Arky? I think I, I there's Arky, you're like, I think issue. Yeah. Arky, I think you're a little breaking there. Yep. Can you hear us okay now? Yeah, yep. I think you're back. Thanks. Um hopefully I'm back. So hopefully everybody can hear me clearly. Let me know if uh, things are going a little bit uh, uh, choppy again on my side. I'm gonna blame the the internet provider. So anyway, uh, I think I think on uh, I think that those are, are very very good uh, answers, uh, Patricia and Alda. Uh, to that end, I'm gonna go into the I'm going to go into the uh, next area, uh, which is we're gonna spend actually a little bit to to review a fictitious resume. And I would like to hear what the panelists see here, uh, given that they're professionals and they've worked uh, many many years. And and I would like to hear them like what is wrong with this resume. And I think what audience di rumah gitu, kalian bisa lihat juga gitu. Kayak apa sih yang apa aja sih yang kita perhatiin in this context? So let me share my screen quickly. Okay, let me know, guys, kalau udah kelihatan. Yep, we can see it. Yeah. Okay, so ini fictitious resume uh, dari Jane Doe. Uh, jangan gear kalau namanya Jane, jadi bukan. It's not. It's not. Ini ini hanya persamaan aja. Uh, so going to the next one, kita bakal deep dive ini. Kita bakal deep dive to the top of the resume. Jane Doe, ada education, ada about, ada contact. Ini, ini maybe uh, first things first. Apa sih ini yang kayaknya agak-agak apa tuh perlu diperbaiki dari 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 area ini? So ini say, terserah oh, oh, whoever wants to go first. Uh, Patricia, go ahead. Yeah, I would say first things first. Um, in U.S. resumes, we don't show our date of birth or our, our age we, because nobody really cares about that. Jadi date of birth sama age-nya bah, um, lebih baik dihapus aja. Terus usually kalau di atas di atas setelah Jane Doe itu you talk about you you write about your contact information jadi Jane Doe at Gmail, terus phone number um, and also your LinkedIn profile would be a good replacement. Yeah. Uh, and then if we want to talk about the education, uh, I think we can like uh, explore and like, you know, kayak nambah-nambahin content a little bit instead of only like mentioning the university names and your GPA, which is good. Uh, we can talk about your extracurricular curricular here. Uh, I put my summer internship actually under the education. So, but it depends on if you want to highlight it under the experience, which we could talk about it later. That's also up to you, but I'm more comfortable like talking about the highlighted classes that I took. For example, I want to apply for venture capital a job. I will highlight like, okay, I took like blockchain class. I took like fintech class, something like that with, like, you know, just highlight the relevant uh, school experience that might help you get a job. Terus kayak, I think cum laude predicate it's it's not the right, uh, you know, how to present cum laude. So probably just like GPA 3.8 in the bracket cum laude. So yeah, that's what I see from from this. 
I think just to add on a bit, I feel like if I look at this CV, I sort of wouldn't have any um like like I look at the universities and I kind of not know like like I can't like I'm from the UK, so I know kind of like Sonsi's in the UK, for example. But then if you're applying to a multinational companies, I think it's probably good to be specific of like where, like Sonsi University UK, and like Korea University Indonesia or something. Good point, good point. And I, ini juga, I think uh, on the on the about side-nya juga kayaknya perlu dirapin lagi gitu. Kenapa? It's it's like summarizing, tapi ini, ini di, dibikin sebuah ring, rangkuman, tapi mungkin perlu ditambahin kayak so what-nya gitu. Kenapa mau apply pekerjaan ini? Bisa dibilang gitu, saya ingin apply pekerjaan finance atau disambungin. Ada 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 satu sentence lagi biar lebih rapi. Oke, okay, let's go to how, let's go to the bottom of the resume now. Lihat kita lihat kontennya sekarang. Ini ada organizational experience. Uh, so, gimana nih, guys? Like, what's what's uh, what needs to be improved? I think for the organizational experience, the very top should be the company name. Jadi ini kan di atasnya matching manager itu that should be in the bottom. Jadi the company name should be at the top, and that should be highlighted because at the end of the day, they want to know where you've worked, what company it is. So the bolded line should always be the company name. Yeah, and th I think also to add to that, like if you put the company names and it's not like Fortune 500, uh, I usually like put like a very short one-liner explaining about the companies, especially if you are uh, working in Indonesia, like probably the US company doesn't know like what's the company, but actually it's a kind of a unicorn or a big e-commerce in Indonesia. So you want to highlight it like this is a very good company that you've been working with. Terus kayak uh, responsible for recruitment. Ini, it's good for like, you know, the situation task explanation. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, we should like put some achievement in here. So by putting like some quantified uh, result, that will be bad, like makes this uh, resume much more better and like grabs the HR attention. So yeah, I think we, we need to add that too. Sama, I mean, uh, kalo in, in my point of view, yang, the other one that's, that's missing is also the star framework on some of the, uh, uh, the way the person is answering. On top, it says respons responsible for recruitment, reception, hospitality of incoming, etc. But there is no like, What, how does it impact the company? How, how does it give you uh, more uh, information to it in, in a very brief manner? I think, I think to that end, uh, something that I'd like to raise is that like, you have to be very, very uh, meticulous. You have to be very detailed when you're writing your resume into ensuring that when somebody reads it, they know it is a high quality writing. They know the job uh, information matches to, to the expectation. And finally, uh, it if whenever possible add in some very very important component in it yang uh, that can really differentiate you from one another one of it is uh, quantification one of it is the star framework and obviously like crafting the, the the resume to tailor it with your accomplishment so that it suits or, or fits with the job uh, expectations i think i think uh, let me invite nancy first nancy do you have anything to say okay. Sorry. i was gonna say just to add on a little bit on what you said earlier like Um, I think you mentioned you need to be very meticulous, right, when it comes to writing CV. So when I first see the CV, when I first saw the CV, I noticed it's um, uh, just like things like it has a sort of different structure in the sense that the first one has a little bit of explanations and then the second and the third one has literally nothing on it. Mm -hmm. And like it doesn't tell you anything basically on that like account stuff of, of incoming exchange regular. I basically do not know what you kind of do in this experience and what you gain there. And then the very thing that I like, you can call me for being like, I don't like too particular, but then this, sorry, am I breaking? Nope, nope, you're good. I can hear echo, okay. Okay, all good. Um, one like very small thing, but I feel like it's a bit particular to myself. It's like uh, how it's structured, as you can see, uh, they put like the company and then in the first one, they put the company and then slash the working date. The second one, the same. And then the third one, they put the date first and then what they do. I was like, Ooh. I was like, I like, I, I see an inconsistency like immediately, like to my eyes. 
and I think lastly is the fact that there's a big white space on the left side. I feel like it's such a waste for you to have such that um like like such a big gap there because like you can put so much more. You can explain a little bit more um and maximize the space on the side. I think that's those are the things that I noticed from this screenshot. I guess. Very very good point, Nancy. Any I mean if you ED like. the fact that the dates and the, the name of the thing bisa yeah, bisa tidur gitu at, at night um, and totally agree i think very very important point is to ensure that the if there's a blank space don't limit blank space and make sure that it's a uh, you you optimize your resume properly Arke, are we losing you again? I think you're breaking a little bit. Hey. Oops, I think we just lost Arke, but uh, I, I'm, I'm hey. still in touch with, okay, we're not. Okay, I'm back, wow. <laughs> I'm surprised that the connection is uh, pretty choppy here that states. So anyway, uh, I, I assume uh, my screen is no longer sharing. Just want to confirm. Yeah, I think you're okay. no longer sharing. So let me go back into sharing the screen. OK, is it back on? Yep. Okay, sounds good. So let's continue. Uh, um, I think I think everybody uh, raised a very very interesting points on on the resume and CV uh, today, and I would like to answer a question uh, that is listed in here. Uh, so one of the question by by Jansen is that uh, building competitiveness would be the way for us to shine in the global stage. Question to all panelists. How do you strategically develop your skill set and leverage those skills to stand out among others? What resources do you need to acquire those remarkable competencies? So, what's what's your anybody want to take a swing at this? How how do you build? Uh, how do you strategically develop your skill sets? So I can I can start. So the first of all, I think we have to know what game are we going to pursue. So let's say you have the stream role that you have defined. So the first of all, you have to speak with people that have been in the in industry and want to help you. So networking, I think that's a very important first step. So you just like, you know, uh, have a cold chat with them, like try to uh, get like 15 minute chat to understand like the role and what exactly the role require. For example, in my role, MBA is preferred. So I have to prepare for my MBA to get into the role. So it's kind of like know what the game uh, you need to really pursue and like build your skill set. Jadi nggak nggak kayak uh, ngasal aja gitu untuk misalnya pengen kerja software engineer, you have to know like what kind of software engineer like coding uh, skills that you need to pursue. Terus, uh, jadi kalau misalnya chat with Nancy, you will know like what's the secret. And then you will be more strategically like uh, plan your uh, next path to really get closer to what role you want to uh, be. Nancy, mau nambahin? Sorry. I think just to, oh yeah. Well, I personally, um, in terms of shaping my own skills, I personally get, First of all, you need to be realized what your what what your weaknesses are, and then slowly work on it. Um, so, for example, if you're someone who's very shy to speak in public, like unlike or even like you're someone who's very shy, nervous during all those interviews, and I think you should leverage all the help that you can possibly get, like. Practice interviewing, but not only with yourself, whether it is like as a friend to help you with, 
um, or I think I think stuff like um, like what Aldo said earlier, like find sort of like a mentor for you, someone who's willing to like guide you to to someone who's willing to guide you to be a better person of yourself, but also align with what your career goals are, I guess. So like, yeah, reach out to those who have, reach out to those above, like reach out to those who are currently in the positions that you want and then like get insights from them, I guess. Yeah. So all that has summed it up nicely. Anything to add, Patricia? Yeah, I think another thing to add is, you know, as Alda and Nancy mentioned, to have a mentor. I think that's going to be very important because as an 18, 19 year old, you don't really know what you want to do in your career. So there, there's a high chance that your, your first job is probably not going to be your forever job. It's not going to determine where your career trajectory is going to be. And that's totally fine because that's when you figure out what you want to do in life and what you don't want to do in life. And I think in terms of trying to find that certain skill set, let's say you are in a job that you are, you know that you don't wanna stay there forever. You could reach out to your manager and you say, hey, I think that I, I want to be doing things that are more you know, project management, ma management based or I want to do more public speaking, I wanna be more client facing. If you reach out to your managers and you talk about what you actually wanna do, they could really help you determine you know, maybe you should join this team instead and you have them help you by speaking out. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Patricia. And hopefully I'm back and no more connection issues, but uh, thanks a lot for answering the questions. Let's move on to the next segment. Uh, what we want to do now is that, uh, and thanks Vijaya, it's a good idea that we are swapping. Uh, in, case, in case I get logged out, the screen is still sharing. Uh, let's go to the next slide, Vijaya. And let's spend some time on interviewing. So if you click click next and we'll bring out all the, uh, let's go to, yep, let's uh, on this particular here, thank you, we can we can see everything. Any, any penting, jadi uh, four key elements that we want to talk about. It's not everything, tapi ini yang penting. Number one is punctuality, uh, datang on time. Uh, number two is the star concept, which I have mentioned earlier. Number three is asking question. What, what it means by asking question is that as an interviewee, you have to be able to ask really good questions to, to people that you are, uh, you are speaking with during your interview. And lastly, very, very important, especially for Indonesians, communication skills. Like how do you, how do you talk? How, what is your body language? How do you project confidence? These are important elements in, in interview. So I think to that end, uh, I think Vijay, if you don't mind unsharing the screen, and uh, we'd like to have the discussion again with the with the speakers, uh, in and 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 have them share their interesting background uh, in terms of interviewing. So uh, I think punctuality is very very important. Uh, being Indonesian, jam karet or rubber watch or what do you call it, like people are always late. Uh, and I'm seeing a prevalent uh, as, issue as well among Indonesian students into coming in for a, a global company interview. They come in like very, very close to the interview time. Uh, to me, that's a very nervous, uh, nerve wracking experience if, if that's the case. So maybe if anybody wanna share a tip with, okay, what, what's happened, what happened usually in, in terms of an interview process that people never think about? Uh, I would, I, I'm thinking of like, if you can share some experience that going to the site is not like an A to B process it's not like direct process like what's what's your take on that I think for me um, I think one of the cultural things that are different from Indonesia versus the US is they really value punctuality and I think you know there's a saying where you know you have to be five ten minutes early whenever you go to a US event and that goes for me when I was applying for jobs and specifically at Deloitte I actually arrived at the site 30 minutes earlier um, and because I tend to get really nervous, I just walked around the block and just to try to calm myself down. And I think part of the things that people don't realize is, you know, you're in a new building. You know, some elevators only go up to the 15th floor, whereas your interview is on the 30th floor. And I actually made that mistake where I think my interview was on the 30th floor, but I went to the wrong elevators. I had to go all the way down, go back to the receptionist and figure that out. So I think you need to have some time prepared to, you know, for in case of any situations that might arise, right? So I think making sure that you arrive on time, if not before, arrive early for an interview, 15 to 20 minutes early. Um, in that way, not only do you feel more prepared, more calm, but you're also not gonna piss off any of your interviewees, interviewers. 
Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. Um, I think uh, another thing that to uh, another thing that is very very important in terms of uh, interviewing would be uh, the star concept. How do we answer questions uh, appropriately? So I think uh, to that end, maybe I'd like to invite Alda. Uh, Alda, this is uh, one of the business school important thing, right? Being able to describe star. So if you if you don't mind, maybe like sharing a little bit to the audience, uh, what is star and and how would you respond to that if if this is the general expectation everywhere? Yeah, uh, so basically, uh, STAR, it's like stands for situation, task, action, result. It's kind of like a, a fundamental framework that you, that people usually have to know, like, especially for their like, first interview. Jadi, uh, ini sebenarnya a very useful framework for anything, like for resume preparation, for interview. Jadi, basically, uh, that helps you to be more structured by describing like what exactly the situation and then the task which is what are what are your expect what are the expectation to you to do to do something and then what's your action and then quantifying the result as i mentioned earlier jadi uh, kalau misalnya di uh, behavioral interview which is one of the most common type of interview in the us uh, kayak misalnya tell me about the time when you face a challenge in the workplace or tell me about the time when you have to show your leadership uh, experience. Jadi, uh, star framework itu bisa help kita buat kayak uh, hit the uh, milestone, like certain points, to really explain in a more like concisely, briefly, like and hit the spot. Jadi, contohnya misalnya kayak kita udah prepare ya story kita ketika kita mau uh, show leadership or uh, show like when the time we have the challenge, Jadi kita bisa mulai dari describing the situation. Kayak uh, contohnya misalnya waktu aku kerja di bank, uh, masalahnya adalah uh, challenge-nya adalah gua harus uh, influence certain party untuk work uh, in a deal like working with me to achieve certain goal. Jadi kayak gua ceritain masalahnya apa, terus habis itu uh, what I have to be uh, doing. Kayak contohnya gua harus uh, contact three other bankers to work with me in like certain syndication loan deal. Jadi untuk contact those people and convince them to work with me, it's like uh, you have to explain that there. And then what's my action? It's like, you know, just go to the bank, try to, you know, like influence, like uh, ask them for coffee and like a specific, this is just an example, like random example. You can, you can explain your story better, I believe. But the most important thing is like, you kind of like have a key action point that you actually do and contribute to the team and contribute to, you know, make a change in, the, in your organization. And as the result, you solve what kind of problem. So that's like a showcase, a strong leadership and uh, showcase your problem solving skills when they ask you the challenge that you might have uh, face uh, in your workplace. Jadi hope it's clear. <laughs> Very, very, very clear, Alda. And uh, I think one of the panelists brought up a very, very good uh, information. You got to practice this with somebody else. It, this is not like a, a, a personal, uh, uh, a pers- I mean, this is a personal development, professional development, but you have to have somebody to practice together with, somebody who has an experience, somebody who can see, uh, who can spot your weaknesses. So I would recommend everybody, uh, I, I think all of us here in the, in the call, uh, create a group of friends back in school to practice. Uh, I would recommend the same. You create a group of friends to practice. If you don't have one, you can, there is a lot of online forum to practice interview, surprisingly. And I used to do that as well back then. Um, now, uh, I think I just want to uh, be mindful to everybody. I, it's surprisingly like we, we go on the time like very, very fast. So uh, if it's okay, we would like to see, at, I know we're targeted to finish uh, nine o'clock Jakarta time and uh, three o'clock UK time. Perhaps we would like just to add another 15 minutes so we can wrap up and cover the most important aspect, which is execution. And then we can jump into the Q&A section. So if, if that's okay. Uh, I think the last part of the interviewing process uh, that I would like to highlight uh, very, very quickly before jumping in, there's a section that that we've written, ask questions. What what we mean by ask questions is that when you jump into the interview, typically the last five minutes, the last 10 minutes, the interviewer will, will ask you to, to see, to see they will check on you if you have any questions or not. In this case, this is a very, very important aspect. Uh, ask very, very good question. Ask a question that can impress them. 
Why is it important? Because if you ask questions such as, uh, uh, how, you, you can ask questions specific to the company that nobody else have thought about. It shows that you have done your research. An example of a good question will be, how is the company culture? Like what? How do you how do you operate? What is the what is the uh, what is the working uh, life balance? Uh, and if you can do a little bit of research and ask that specific question, it'll be very very beneficial for you because it will impress the employers. Now to that end, I think we'll jump in directly into execution. Uh, so if you don't mind, Vijaya, uh, if you can share the screen again quickly, supaya bisa kasih audience too, in terms of execution. Apa aja sih yang penting? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Vijaya. So, ini ada empat aspek ya. Hiring cycle, again, uh, because this is so important, we have to put it here again. Uh, box number dua, full-time worker visa. Uh, we're not immigration specialists, we're not immigration lawyer. Cuman, uh, if you're working in the US, if you're working in the UK, if you're working in another country, there are some visa elements. Please, 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 please spend some time understanding that. Usually in school, they have some service to tell you what to do. Uh, or usually employer or the company themselves will uh, will know what to do with it. But it's always good to do uh, personal reading. Uh, and finally, in terms of channel, Now, we'll spend some time here in channels and networking. So these are two important elements. And if you don't mind unsharing the screen, Vijaya. We'll go back to the deep dive mode with the, with the, with the panelists. Uh, what, what it means by channels is that There are many ways for the job opening kayak di koran muncul. Number two, you can go through your school. Uh, usually, a lot of schools have career development or career service. And relationship with companies. Uh, this is another way to consider here. Like, what's, what's your take? Maybe uh, first things first, I'm going to check in with Alda. International organization, what's the approach? untuk apply kayak UN, World Bank atau this uh, super super governmental organization. Uh, ya yeah, uh, untuk this international organization biasanya itu dari portal like we have the scope portal. Uh, jadi emang kayak nggak bisa pakai jalur belakang gitu kalau <laughs> kalau gua lihat kan ada certain company ya like, you have to be like like having a strong network to get in. Tapi kalau untuk like UN type of organization, emang semuanya centralized di global platform itu sih. Uh, oh ya, yeah, uh, on, untuk some programs, kayak misalnya rotational program or young professional programs, biasanya uh, target school also, kayak HR-nya bakal pergi ke target school untuk kayak kasih sharing session, terus that's how you network with the HR as well. Itu in some sense helping you to understand better about the role, sama kalau HR-nya kayak ibaratnya vibing sama sama kita uh, that could be a good impression right uh, for our first interview so that in certain step is like might help in the future of our interview process Thanks, Alda. And uh, very important to everybody, make sure hiring cycle-nya tahu juga like don't miss out and don't do your application tiga hari sebelum deadline That's not a good way to do it. People usually spend 100 days or 3 bulan to prepare the materials. Ini ini penting banget soalnya. Ini this is a common mistake biasa dari 10 10 student Indonesia that we we meet yang and we help gitu. Tiga uh, apply on time, tujuhnya bilang aduh lupa saya kemarin apply enggak tanya udah kelewatan. So please don't do that. Um, and then uh, another thing is is on the the school channel. Uh, I think uh, Patricia if I'm not mistaken you apply directly from school, right? So maybe uh, if you can share a little bit. Yeah, so I think you know using your career services in school will, is very useful because they have coaches there to help you with your resume, with your cover letter. But I think at the end of the day, you and them have the same common goal just to get you a job because it's good for their statistic and it's good for you to get your own job. So for me, I my school offered you know a couple of jobs online. Um, in the school portal that we could apply to. And because of that, you know, just because I went through it every single day, I was able to find you know, some jobs that I could apply to. And because of that, they came to the university, they did our first round interviews in school. So I think because 
they came in with the intention that they want to hire people from this university, then you're going to have a higher chance of getting those certain positions. So make sure to use your school channels and all the resources that you have when you're trying to apply for jobs. Thanks, uh, Patricia. But sometimes it doesn't apply. Like some some schools do not have uh, some schools, or sometimes certain departments do not have these linkages to companies. And to that end, usually we have to go through the to the online application or that's bebas. I think Nancy, you got your job through this method, right? Langsung yeah. go for it. Langsung lewat, skip aja semuanya. Langsung langsung apply aja gitu. <laughs> So true, Arki. Jadi, um, I actually got my job itu uh, from, actually, it's a summer internship that got converted to a full-time job. Uh, but when I was applying for my summer internship, I literally, like, go to um, job websites, go to all, like, you know, sort of, like, like, look for all the companies that can help, that can actually sponsor visa because i think like uh, in one of the sites you mentioned earlier no 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 the visa thing right because if you're applying to a lot of companies tapi company benar-benar cannot sponsor you to work there okay it's there's nothing you can do about that so you apply a lot tapi applynya ke companies yang bisa sponsor you um so yes i did that i basically applied to a lot of companies get a lot of rejections as well um but yeah eventually Thanks. made it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you Nancy. And uh, ini sebelum lanjut lagi ke the, the final topic-nya yang yang on the net, on the networking side ini ada beberapa pertanyaan let's, let's try to answer. So, ini uh, pertanyaan yang di atas nih ya. Um, should we earn degrees from overseas university if we want to work abroad and in a global company? Uh, and where can we find any ac- access or, or information on overseas job vacancy, especially for Indonesian? Very, very interesting question. Uh, the first one is on, uh, ap- kita perlu nggak sih degree uh, luar negeri untuk apply ke perusahaan luar negeri? Um, I think my direct answer is no, actually. I, uh, and uh, feel free to jump in juga, uh, uh, Alda, Patricia, or Nancy. But uh, from the professional hub perspective, overseas yang, yang in, in New York and uh, other countries there are many people uh, from Indonesia who graduated from Indonesia and they managed to secure jobs in New York uh, they managed to secure job in Switzerland and uh, usually it doesn't matter uh, including technology company including like international organization um, if you have the qualification if you have the uh, the specialty skill yes you can do it I, I, that's what uh, that's what we've been witnessing so far and if, in fact some of the speakers from our past gg series have 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 done this and they've demonstrated that it's possible uh, anything to add maybe from alda uh, or patricia and nancy i think alda would have a good example kan uh, you're in international organization right and the portal is global yeah the portal is global and yeah uh, if you have a international degree uh, it will make like you know much more easier tapi enggak enggak harus ada gitu uh, karena ketika recruiters ngelihat your cert like experience and education uh, pasti ada certain skill set yang mereka cari dong education is one part tapi basically how you present yourself and what actually the skill set you acquire especially karena kayak kalau kita bilang education cuma bisa di Indonesia tapi kan sekarang ada Coursera ada online learning like distance learning like you actually can get a degree from like abroad too uh, while you know getting like from the this platform. Jadi kayak adtech juga udah mulai berkembang. Jadi kayak we could find a way to, you know, uh, persuade the HR that uh, although we are coming from Indonesia, we only have Indonesian degree, but we do like XYZ to really expose ourselves to like global, uh, you know, like market and what global uh, uh, ecosystems. Jadi kayak kita nggak cuman Uh, punya mindset yang di Indonesia aja kayak kita juga update lo sama dunia luar dan education di luar gitu. Jadi I I I don't want to encourage people like okay you have like a, a local degrees and that's enough. No, honestly I think it's not enough. You have to find other things like you know to equip yourself to really enter a, a international organization requirement. Thanks, Alda. Um, okay, so ini uh, ini last topic 
uh, and very very important is in the networking aspect. One of it kan salah satu cara successful getting a job application through through networking. I think may, maybe 50% of uh, students itu at least dapat interviewnya aja itu networking. It doesn't have to be networking ke orang Indonesia but can be networking to orang international or overseas. And I think uh, one thing to raise is that networking itu uh, something that I like to share and and again Alda, Patricia and Nancy please feel free to provide your perspective. Uh, networking is actually an art. Uh, it, it, it may take another discussion. It may take another session like this to to discuss like how networking can be possible. Apa gimana cara successful networking? Cuman very very important ya. Uh, when you're networking, too, you're actually building relationship. You have to be genuine. Uh, you have to really, really or truly uh, uh, establish this 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 bonding with the person. Jadi uh, networking orang pada bilangan, oh kalau kenal orang tuh bisa dapat kerjaan gampang. But it's not like that. You know somebody doesn't mean that the person will give you an interview. You know you know somebody doesn't mean the person will give you the job. Karena you have to build the relationship first. Build Build, uh, build bondingnya, karena one thing that's bad, one thing that's bad practice, and we've witnessed a lot uh, among among Indonesian and non-Indonesian, ketemuan at Facebook atau at LinkedIn, terus tiga hari kemudian atau mungkin dalam dalam dua puluh jam, eh boleh minta job application nggak, boleh minta referral nggak buat kerja, you cannot do that, like it's it's not, you have to spend time dulu before you go there. Anggapannya kalau misalnya jadi pacar gitu, like baru ketemu satu hari kan, kalau suka belum tentu langsung ditembak kan, kayak eh boleh jadi pacar gue nggak, you you won't do that right, so it's the same. Thing with networking, please keep that in mind. And 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 I think the more you practice, the better, uh, the better uh, it is. The better you will do your networking. So thoughts, uh, Alda, Patricia, and Nancy. I think in my experience, I think networking is extremely important, especially in the consulting space, because at the end of the day, you know we are selling our professional services, and we are client facing. So that means that we're going to be talking to people, talking to clients every single day, and you need to have and build those communication skills. So you know, there's so many people that are applying to consulting jobs every day, every year. So how are they going to set you apart? On top of you having a good GPA, on top of you have having great experiences, you need to be able to talk to people. And then part of how they try to assess that is by having networking sessions. So when I try to apply for my job right before each round they would have a cocktail party and that cocktail party is going to be all the interviewees and all the interviewers who are going to be interviewing you tomorrow so i had to gather up my courage to reach out to these people and say like hey you know how how are you like what do you do for fun so that i can create a lasting impression for the next day so the next day you know when i was in your room with the person you know, i said oh you remember our last night's conversation when we talked about X, Y, and Z. He's like, oh yeah, I remember you. I remember you, Patricia. So by doing that, you have that, you know, extra personal connection that is going to be very useful, not only for your interviewing sessions, but also for the future. Thanks, Patricia. Very, very good. Uh, and and something to keep in mind, uh, orang ada yang introvert, ada yang extrovert. So... That is something to consider juga gimana cara-cara latihannya. Um, so to that end, actually, uh, I think we've covered majority of the topics which is cover uh, resume. Uh, for the cover letter, we kind of skip it, tapi we can share you the, the materials because it's it's important. But the other things that we've talked about are more important: execution, sama interviewing. Uh, I think we want to spend more time now actually just to respond to questions. We have so many questions that we we have here, and uh, to all of you, misalnya if we can't answer it, misalnya nggak kejawab, we will. Write them into to uh, and then we will write the answer and send you via email these questions. We will answer everything. Jadi jangan don't don't feel like we're we're, we're ignoring. We're not. We will do that. Uh, I think I think question. This is a very very interesting question. I would like to uh, invite uh, His Excellency Deputy Minister uh, Pak Agus. Uh, there is a question. Uh, many questions actually from the audience. Uh, so the question is that uh, it's actually on um, LPDP and LPDP framework uh, requires. The, for the graduates to return to Indonesia upon completion of their degree. So is there any opportunity or flexibility uh, for them to remain uh, overseas in order to gain certain work experience uh, beforehand? Okay, uh, well, thank you. First of all, I follow your discussions and uh, this is very good that a lot of uh, participants are very eager to pursue the degree abroad. I think, as I mentioned, that uh, most of my life I spent for education. The, the key uh, to be successful studying abroad is first, you have to earn a good uh, enough GPA on the 
as university level in Indonesia. And the second, just be, just make sure your Duval score and L is uh, high enough. Uh, just to give some ideas, my youngest uh, son just completed his master from ANU. At the time was the IL is 7.5. So this is quite uh, good, I think. And uh, now uh, when you get the, the admission letters from US Broads, then you might apply for scholarship either through uh, LPDP or other uh, resources. When we are talking about the LPDP, um, I personally uh, just proposed to the LPDP that all the uh, uh, scholarship recipients have to sign a kind of uh, agreement in which the governments uh, have the right to, to recruit or to assign uh, the best talents uh, and to be assigned either as researchers or lecturer or professional at uh, the state-owned companies or whatever. Yeah. Because as you may know that the government actually facing a shortage of uh, the expertise as, as a lecturer and as all researchers. So we need to replace those uh, researchers and lecturers who retire. Uh, therefore, uh, I propose the, the government must have the right uh, to recruit the cream de la creamers. It doesn't mean that the uh, all scholarship recipients uh, have the right to become uh, the government official, but uh, the other way that the government have the right to recruit, uh, to ask uh, the best talents uh, to serve the country. But <clears throat> since uh, the job opportunity is, is not as, as much as what we thought, uh, I also personally encourage the, the young graduate students uh, who get a scholarship or get the other funding support for other institutions, you may, uh, uh, seek the professional experience abroad. But of course, uh, as I mentioned, that the government uh, have the right to, to call you back whenever the government needs help. So this is the, the, the proposal that I uh, uh, sent to the LPDP. <clears throat> and at the moment, we just on the process of uh, just improving the uh, per press. Uh, uh, enable the government to, to call the best talents uh, to serve the country. And all the scholarship recipient must feel honors whenever the government call you to serve the country, because uh, uh, believe me, uh, that anda semua bisa membantu negara with uh, your expertise later on. <coughs> and uh, Talking about the job interview, if I uh, may to, con some, to contribute, because uh, I also involved in different type of uh, uh, selection committee in uh, several ministers. So the first thing is uh, that you must feel confidence. And to become uh, confident, you must have the competence. Just uh, make sure uh, you have the competencies in certain areas uh, in which you are able to, if you, in which uh, you want to uh, sell it, to promote it. And the second is, yes, you need the CV, whatever, because uh, CV is represent yourself. This is the first step because uh, all the institution have uh, a lot of uh, CV from uh, a lot of applicants. Uh, Sometimes then I open the, the uh, <coughs> applications but they also have the uh, punch of applicants. So usually uh, the first impression is from the, the curriculum VD, which is, uh, represent uh, your expertise and competence. And the second step is uh, when you get the interview, uh, you, I think from my experience, uh, involving in the several selection committee, uh, the most important thing is the the way you present uh, your your thought, uh, and I think it's, it it will be determined by how long is your experience, and also how how good you prepare for the interview. Yeah. Uh, 
the advice that I give to uh, my colleague is just get a practice a lot uh, as much as possible in front of the mirror. Yeah, just uh, speak up uh, your ideas. Uh, just imagine you presenting your thought, your ideas uh, in front of the mirror, and you know your expression uh, and also your gesture as well. Yeah, to strengthen your message. So the first thing is the, the, the credential degrees, of course. Yeah. If you have a good or excellent uh, degree from a reputable university, of course, uh, you will be much more uh, confident. And the second is the, the ability to deliver your thoughts uh, fluently. And this also uh, determined by how frequent you are uh, or how, how long you have the experience on writing. Because writing and uh, interviewing is, is uh, two uh, things that is very important uh, to make a success uh, to get a job. If you are uh, good enough in writing, uh, hopefully you'll be good enough in, in, in the interview. Uh, the most weaknesses of uh, our student is they have a difficulty in articulating uh, their thought. I myself sometimes have to uh, uh, go through the, the draft uh, letter or whatever uh, to my staff uh, to make some corrections. Uh, especially the, the youngest generation at the time, because they are used to use uh, WhatsApp or whatever. Uh, and they are not uh, used to uh, write a formal letter or paper, or whatever. So, uh, again, uh, I want to now at this point, uh, congratulations to all of the participants. I'm uh, more than happy to support uh, the BIPA ideas and, and uh, to strengthen the collaborations uh, for the future. So, please don't uh, hesitate to, to reach me through either email or through my colleagues here in this forum, there are Pa Asriel and Pa Thomas and uh, uh, Mareta. And uh, especially to His Excellency, MS Center, uh, Pa Desta Pachaya. Uh, thank you also. Uh, and Stephen Marceno, success. Saya tidak sabar ingin melihat you all in the driver seats for the next 10 years. Yeah sitting in the parliament in the in the cabinet members or as ceo a reputable companies in indonesia good luck and good night to all thank you so much uh, pagus uh, for your remarks uh, i think uh, to that end we have reached the top of the hour and i would like to say thank you so much for the participants uh, alda patricia and nancy for waking up so early today in your time zone and being able to attend this event uh, to that end uh, i think uh, one important thing to the audience again, we will answer your questions. We will email you the, our responses. Jadi, do, hold tight and we'll spend some time to craft the, the, the answer and it's going to be, hopefully it's going to be helpful for you. Hopefully this session is useful and insightful uh, as it is it was to us uh, in terms of sharing. And I think uh, two things that I would like to remind as well. Uh, number one, uh, we will have an open recruitment for GIPA if you're interested to be part of the team. And number two, uh, several local professional hubs, uh, for example, the US will co conduct a, a career coaching event uh, in a couple of months. And I think it'll be, in, if you're interested to learn more and deep dive, then please reach out to the respective professional hubs. And to that end, I'm going to pass to Steven Marcelino to close the event. Steven, over Thanks to you. Thank you for uh, a very up in uh, handling and facilitating the discussion. I, I don't have anything else to, ask, uh, to add, but I'd like to invite Pak Dubes Desra perhaps to, to say a few words before we wrap up. Thank you, Pak Stephen. Um, a very inspiring, a very enlightening experience for me to witness by myself, uh, especially from the speakers. Five short points. <clears throat> First, thanks Gipa for convening this extraordinarily useful and informative webinar. I'm delighted to say that we have achieved the objective of this webinar and learned directly from professionals. We are enlightened 
and I do believe participants are empowered. And what is also important, the message, expand the, net the networking by joining KIPA. Second, thanks uh, to moderator Arki Meraksa. I think he is the son of Ibu Mini. I think I might have known him when he was little in New York. I'm very happy, I'm very proud to see him uh, doing the uh, moderator well done, uh, Arki. And thank you also to the resource persons, expert, professional, Alda, Ardelia, Nancy, Amelia, and Patricia Suyanto. Allow me to uh, highlight one uh, that was mentioned by Patricia, cultural aspect. Indonesian basically are very shy. They don't want to show off their uh, compatibility, uh, their competence. One of the examples that I've often faced, my question is, convince us that you are the best person for the job. I think this is the opportunity and seize this opportunity to show off, quote unquote. So I think this is very important. The third point, allow me to add also on the importance of having a positive attitude and global mindset. Don't forget, this is also very important. Anticipative, adaptive, and agile. Number four, at the UN, you can also uh, browse the careers.un.org and you are expected to uh, have profile and preparing an application. So everything will be done online. And what is also important with regard to the UN or international organization, do internship there. That's also very important. Once you have done your internship, you are part of the system. When there is a vacancy, you can easily be uh, admitted to the system. My last point, uh, Ma Stephen, let me quote what Charles, Charles Darwin said. It is not the strongest species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones who are most responsive to change. Thank you again. It's an honor, Ma Stephen, uh, for me to be invited. And also thank you, Professor Agus Sartono. If I may encourage, don't wait 20 or 10 years to be the leader in Indonesia. Grab it now, seize the opportunity. It is open. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Desra. It's certainly wonderful closing remarks, trying to adaptive to change and seize the opportunity today. And that's absolutely what we're breathing and encouraging those who are attending to really absorb and try to implement some of the strategies today. We are at the beginning of 2021, but do not wait till tomorrow. Got to start somewhere because, you know, um, in a few weeks time and then you just realize it will be December 2021 and the year is gone again. <laughs> but why don't we make the year of pandemic as a really chance for you to pivot and try and do the process. Hopefully some of the insight from the speakers and the moderator facilitator been, um, been been super useful for you to really bring your career forward. Either you are still at university with final years, final few years, or those who are already working and thinking for a bit of a career change. I think this is really the time. And allow me, I mean, so certainly give us delighted to be able to host this event in collaboration with two of our strategic partners, uh, Kemenko BMK, Korean Ministry for Human Development and Cultural Affairs, and the Indonesian Embassy in London, um, Kaberi London, and also Atikud London. Uh, we're also supported by Bebe Dunia, uh, UPA UK, and IPA USA. Um, Arki did mention that some of overseas professional hubs locally will do their own thing, such as I know in UPA UK, there will be a collaboration event with uh, Pepe in London later on. I know IPA US is going to run uh, career coaching, so please. Uh, to attend for more local specific insights. All of the deep dive will be done over the next coming months and quarter. Um, on the chat box, there is also an opportunity for you to get connected with GIPA so that we know uh, how we can support you if you would like to be connected to your closest overseas professional hubs. If you are in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Australia, and wherever you are, we, we were hoping to be able to connect you with a the, the local one. So don't don't forget to write a bit of feedback and then um, yeah, let's stay connected. If you haven't already followed our social media, please follow our social media. If you haven't followed Pak Desra, Pak Desra has the coolest 
uh, updates and social media. Uh, if you want to follow him and all of the rest of the speakers here, I'm sure are less stay connected. Uh, about more than 50% of people are actually not connected on LinkedIn, even if they already met them. And I think that's, you know, why don't we start today? We start connecting and following those that you would like to follow. On that note, um, I'd like to share GIPA's highest appreciation on behalf of the global community of Indonesia professionals to uh, Prof. Uh, August, Deputy Minister, uh, Pak Desra, to all of the distinguished speakers and moderator facilitator, all of our partners and everyone who've been tuning in. Uh, let's stay in touch. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you banget, Prof. Agus sudah stay up very late uh, in the evening. Yeah, thank you, Mas Marcelo. Uh, Excellency, Pak Destra. Uh, I would like to make sure that uh, all the education attaché, at least in 13 countries, to contact with the BIPAR. Yeah, it's part of the Indonesian Embassy in 13 countries. Yeah. Sehingga setidaknya nanti all the Indonesian students study abroad itu bisa access ke BIPA, wherever they are. Uh, so I guess it's good, good network, I guess. It's good. And congratulations, Excellency, Pak Desra. Thank you. Thank Success. you so much, Bapak. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Desra. Okay. Izin, Pak. Pa, eh, Pak Thomas, terima kasih. Ya, ya Bapak, terima kasih, Pak. Pak Desra, jangan lama-lama, nanti balik jadi uh, foreign minister. Oh, oh jangan, <laughs> Pak. <laughs> kasih, kasih yang muda-muda, Pak. <laughs> ah, enggak. <Yeah. laughs> Siap, matunun, Bapak, parang. Mari. Saya juga uh, apa sekarang banyak diskusi dengan uh, Pak Dubes di Jerman untuk bicara oh, tentang personal training. Pak Hafas ya? Pak Hafas ya betul. Siap siap siap. Matunun. Mari. Pak.